Pray God bless you tonight, my brothers, sisters, and friends. We truly thank and praise God for allowing us this opportunity to come back to you once again. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, great God, we just want to thank you for what you've done and for what you're going to do. As we come tonight with this word, great God, we pray that you bless us with a word from heaven on tonight. We pray that you touch every heart that would be open to this word, that will hear this word. We give you glory, honor, and praise for what you're about to do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. All right, my brothers, sisters, and friends, uh, we're going to ask that you get your Bibles tonight. The Bible is the true inspired word of God, and uh, it is our road map to heaven. And uh, we definitely, definitely uh, want to get the Bible uh, to make sure that what is being said is in the word of God. All right, let's take our Bibles and turn to uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. 1 John chapter 5. Verse 7, we want to keep this scripture in mind. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. Glory be to God, hallelujah. Now, we have been sending these messages of these videos to Pastor Dino Jennings and his congregation all this week. We've been sending them a warning from the Lord. They need to uh, begin to stand on the word of God. They need to begin to believe the word of God. They are teaching false doctrine. All right? They are teaching false doctrine. So let's go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. All right, if you have your Bibles, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Now, I just want to take just a little time out right here. And I want to explain, do a little elaboration on the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I want to talk about God for a few moments to uh, help you understand when I say God, who I'm talking about. Sometimes when I refer to God, I refer to the Father. But most of the time, <clears throat> I try to make a distinction between the Father and God. All right? So I will say God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now I want you to understand that according to the Word of God, God consists of three persons. The Father, God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, or the Word, and the Holy Spirit. These three See, you can't get rid of them. You can't get rid of these three. And this is what apostolics try to do. They try to get rid of three and take the three and make three one. Well, you can't do that. You can't eradicate three. You can't get rid of three. They are three in numbers. One, two, three. So you have to leave them as three in your theology, in your, in your belief, in your teaching, in your preaching. God the Father is one person. Jesus Christ the Son is the second person. The Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost is the third person. All right? Of the Godhead. So we have three persons in the Godhead. We call it the Trinity. Same thing. Trinity simply means three. Tri, Trinity, three. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You can't get rid of three and make three one. The only way three can become one is to become in unity, to come together in unity. 
Just ask the member members, the many members in the body of Christ, in the church, to become one body. Just as the husband and the wife in the marriage to become one flesh. That's the only way you can take the two and make one. The only way you can take the many in the church and make one body. That's the only way the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost can be made one by bringing them together in unity. They are in unity. They are in total agreement, 100% agreement. There is never a fight or an argument with the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost because they are God. They are perfect in perfect unity in perfect agreement. All right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, let me kind of give you an example. <clears throat> let me kind of give you an, an example by using an egg an egg that we cook for breakfast every morning. All right? Now, when we think of an egg, we know an egg has three parts to it. It has the shell, the white, and the yolk. All right? Three parts to an egg. The shell could represent Let's say the shell represents God the Father. Let's say that the yoke represents Jesus Christ the Son. Let's say that the white represents the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. So you have your three parts right there. <clears throat> Let's see those three parts of, of an egg or the egg laying out before you. The shell the yoke, the white, representing the Godhead, representing the three persons of the Godhead. All right? That is the way we should always see them when we're using an example or the analogy of the egg. Always see them in parts. All right? I always see the Father as an individual, the Son as an individual, the Holy Spirit as an individual. The only time you are to see them as one, and that one would, would represent unity. So see when you see them as the one egg, see them as being in unity. That is the only way that you are to see the one, see them as one. So when we say oneness, when I say oneness, that's what I mean when I say oneness. Them being together in unity. That's what the Bible meant when it says these three are one. They are one together in unity. They are that one A. It doesn't mean that they are one person, that there is one person in the Godhead. No. The very fact that the shell, the yoke, and the white are there, we're using those parts. They represent the three persons in the Godhead. See, you are not to see them as one. You are to see them as three. Because the Bible says here that these three, these three are one. So you can't get rid of the three. You can't get rid of the shell, the white, and the yoke. All right? Or the shell, the yoke, and the white. You can't get rid of these three. You can't take these three and make one. All right? You can't do that. So if you want to use the egg as an analogy to the spirit, I mean to the, uh, uh, to the, um, uh, Godhead, you can you could use that like that, but you are you are to never you wouldn't go and get three eggs. See, you would you couldn't go and get three eggs, one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. That wouldn't work. So you would have to use that egg analogy like that. All right, the very, the very fact that the parts could be of the eggs could be broken. 
and the very fact that the egg could be broken and then you could get the three parts from the one egg then the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And then, of course, when the egg is whole, one together as one, that can represent unity. All right? And so that is, that is the way that the Bible speaks of God. All right? So I just, I just use something uh, that, that Jesus, Jesus often used something in everyday life to convey uh, a spiritual point, and that's what I just did. So that is the way we are to view God, see God, because that's the way God is, three and one, or one and three, all right? So when I say God, I'm talking about God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three make up the one God. They make up the one God. Jesus Christ is not God the Father. He's not the one God. Jesus Christ is not the one God. Jesus Christ is God. He's part of the Godhead. See? He's part of the Godhead. He's the second person of the Godhead. See, there are ranks in the Godhead. There is order in the Godhead. And we're going to look at that. All right? Glory be to God. All right? Now, <clears throat> let's take, the, take our Bibles and go to Isaiah or Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah or Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. <clears throat> we hope you have your Bibles and you're turning with us tonight. Glory be to God. See, there is only one truth in the Bible. In other words, Gino doesn't have his truth and I have my truth and another pastor or preacher have his truth or minister or teacher uh, have their truth and everybody be right. No, there is only one right. There is only one truth. All right? And that's why we are able, that's why the Bible talks about us being able to rightly divide the word of truth. Because there is a truth. And everybody doesn't have the truth. Geno Genesis does not have the truth. Anybody that's teaching that uh, Jesus Christ is the Father does not have the truth. All right? Isaiah or Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. All right, let's go back to the, to the beginning of this scripture. For unto us a child is born. A child is born. The father is not a child. The father has never been a child. God the Father is not a child, neither has he ever been a child. He was never born. God the Father has never been born. All right? He was not born, but the Son Jesus was born. The child Jesus was born. All right? So, God the Father cannot be Jesus Christ the Son. Jesus Christ the Son cannot be God the Father. Because God... Was God the Father was never born. All right? Neither did he ever die. You can't kill God. But you could kill Jesus. Or let's say Jesus allowed them to kill him. He laid his life down. He died. But God never died. All right? God never died. It was God the Father who sent Jesus Christ his Son. All right? So there are three that bear record in heaven, not one. You can't have a Godhead with one person in it. All right? And the Bible does not teach a Godhead or the Godhead, and the Bible speaks of the Godhead three times. All right? And it does not teach the Godhead having one member in it. Who is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not God the Father. So he said, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now Jesus Christ is all of those names. Alright? All of those names apply to Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ is God. 
Now, Jesus Christ is not God the Father, but he is God. He is God, but he's not God the Father. So just about every name that you hear of God the Father having, you're going to hear of Jesus Christ the Son having. Because Jesus Christ is God, and God the Father, or Jehovah God, is God. All right? The both of them are God. The two of them are God. And the Holy Spirit is God. Remember what the scripture said. There are three that bear record in, in heaven. There's a record of three in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. These three make up the one God. These three are one in unity. These three are one in agreement. These three work together in perfect union. That's how they are one. That is the oneness of God. All right? <clears throat> that is what we call the oneness of God. Not because there is only one person in heaven or one entity in heaven or one person in the Godhead. No, that's, that's not oneness. All right? That is stupidity there. That is ignorance. That's what that is. That is disobedience. That is not believing the word of God. That is your own thought and your own idea and your own philosophy and your own opinion and your own theology. That's not the true inspired unadulterated word of God. All right. Now let's take our Bibles and let's go to um, St. John chapter 20 verse 27. St. John chapter 20 verse 27. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We hope you have your Bibles and you'll turn it with us on tonight. St. John chapter 20, verse 27. All right. St. John chapter 20, verse 27. Uh, this is what it says. It says, Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. <clears throat> Verse 28, And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, my Lord and my God, now, just because Thomas said, my Lord and my God, does not mean that Jesus Christ is God the Father. It is no surprise that Thomas said to Jesus, my Lord and my God. It is no surprise. Glory be to God, hallelujah. Because Jesus is Lord, and Jesus is God. So you can't take that and run away with it and say, well, that proves right there that Jesus Christ is God the Father. No, it does not. It only proves what the Bible says. It says that the God the Father made Jesus Christ both Lord and Christ. That's why he's Lord, because God the Father made him Lord. Look, go to go to go to the book of Acts. I believe that's found in Acts about two thirty five or two thirty six. Acts chapter two, verse thirty six. <clears throat> Acts chapter two, verse thirty six. Thomas put his hand in Jesus' side and said, "My Lord and my God." Look at verse thirty six. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye crucified, both Lord and Christ. So it's, it's, it's no surprise that Thomas would say, My Lord, it is God the Father who made him Lord. But you don't, you, you're not supposed to take that and run away with it and say, Well, okay, this, this proved right here that Jesus is God the Father. No, it does not. Not at all. All right? 
my Lord, my God. Well, look. Take keep your finger there and go to go to um go over to about uh let's say um Hebrews. Go to Hebrews about verse I mean chapter one. Hebrews chapter one and look at about verse uh let's say Hebrew chapter one verse uh, let's say about 8. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8. Let's run that real quickly. Thomas said, My Lord, my God, God, Jehovah God, made Jesus Christ both Lord and Christ. How did Jesus Christ become Lord? God the Father made him Lord. So if God the Father made him Lord, then God the Father exists. We showed you last night how God the Father exists. All right? When he showed Moses himself. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And again, we see in Acts 2, 2, 30, 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly. Therefore, let Geno Jennings and his congregation know assuredly that God hath made, God the Father hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. It is God his father who made him Lord. All right. Now we're showing you how he, how he is God. We, it's no surprise that he would be called Lord and God. All right. Verse eight. I'm, yes. Verse eight. Chapter Hebrews chapter one, verse eight. But unto the son, but unto the son who has been made both Lord and Christ, but unto the son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a sceptical of righteousness is the sepulchre of thy kingdom. All right, is the scepter of thy kingdom. Glory be to God, hallelujah. So we see that it is no surprise why Thomas would say, my Lord, my God, because God has made him Lord and God is calling him God. God is calling him God. But unto the son, he saith, who is he? God the Father. He says to the Son, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. That's what the Father said to the Son. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So you can't get away from the Word of God. You can't get away from the, from the right, inspired, unadulterated Word of God. You can't get away from the teaching of the Bible, teaching you the truth concerning the Father and the Son. All right? Let's go back to John 27, 28. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. All right? So we have known uh, these apostolics for years to use these scriptures to try to prove that Jesus is the Father. But you can't prove that Jesus is the Father to anybody that knows the scriptures. All right? Anybody that knows and know how to uh, comprehend, understand, interpret the scriptures. Glory be to God. You, you can't pull that on them. All right? Now let's go to uh, St. John chapter 20, verse 16 and 17. St. John, stay in the same book and go to St. John chapter 20. We'll stay in the same chapter. And let's just go to the 16th through the 17th verses. All right? 20, 16. St. John chapter 20, verse 16. Jesus saith unto her, Mary... She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Verse 17, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and to your father and to my God and to your God. All right, let's go back to verse 16. See, we're getting some, some proper understanding here now. See? It doesn't make any difference how you try to come against me and what you say about me and how you feel about me is what the word says, see? See, you're not fighting me, you're fighting the word. I'm just telling you what the word says. Now, either you're going to believe the word, you're going to believe Jesus, or you're going to believe Gino. That's what it boils down to. If you want to continue to say that Gino is a true prophet of God, a true a true apostle of God, and that he's, you know, he, he he's a righteous man, and uh, that's 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 your that's your 
prerogative if you want to do that. If you want to continue to do that, that's up to you. All right? I, I'm not I'm not going to fight you on it. Yeah, I, I'm not fighting with you. I'm not I'm not here to try to I'm not going to take a lot of time trying to convince you. I'm going to give you the word and let the Holy Ghost work on you. See, it's the word of God that's going to have to work on you. If the word of God does not get a hold to you and work on you, you're going to be lost anyway. Hallelujah. So it's the word that's going to have to do the work. I'm going to present the word and let the word do the work. The word is either going to draw you or drive you, one of the two. You're going to come to Christ, you're going to come to Christ, or you're going to run from Christ, one of the two. It's evident that you don't have the word. It's evident that you don't have salvation. Now, this is not to everybody, but this this is to those that are this is to those that are fighting with the word of God and believing the lie that Geno is telling them or have told them. All right? It's not to everybody that's listening to me. But you know who you are. Glory be to God, hallelujah. All right, now let's go back to verse 16. Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. All right, verse 17. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. Now, if I, don't, if I didn't have a father, I wouldn't be ascended to him. If I am the father, I wouldn't be ascending to the father. I, I can't be the father and, and ascend to myself. That's that's ignorance. If I am the Father, I'm not going to ascend to myself. That is ignorance. So I cannot be the Father if I'm ascending to the Father. I cannot be the Father if I am ascending to the Father, if I'm going to the Father. I can't be the Father and go to the Father. I can't be the Father and go to myself. See, all of that is just... It's, 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 it's silly. It's ignorance. It doesn't make any sense. And people should be more intelligent than that. You have gone to school and been educated. You're supposed to be more intelligent than that. And anybody that would sit and listen to such stupidity, something is wrong with them. And it's one thing to listen to it, but it's another thing to listen and to believe it. And hold on to it and, and try to teach other people the same garbage. All right? Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. I have a Father. My Father. My is a personal pronoun. It shows possession. My Father. He belongs to me. He's my Father. All right? But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father. I ascend unto my father. I go to my father and to my God. I go to my God. Jesus said, I have a God. I go to my God. Jesus said, I go to my God. Fight with Jesus over that. He said, I go with my God. I told you that God the Father is God. Jesus said, I go to my God. He said, I go to the Father. The Father is God. The Son is God. And we know that the Son is God because God, the Father, calls the Son God. And the Son can forgive sin. The Son can save. Only God can forgive sin and save. That's why the Holy Spirit is God because the Holy Spirit forgives sin and saves washes sin and saves glory be to God hallelujah so he said I sin to my father and your father so not only is God the father my father but he's your father he's all of our father but there are uh, some of you who doesn't want him as your father. You want the son as the father. But it doesn't work like that. 
I don't think Jesus is going to let you, I don't think God the Father is going to let you in like that. I don't think he's going to let you into heaven. It's up to him. I don't have the last say. I don't have the final say. But based on what I can see, I don't believe you're going to get in there. Because once again, it is the Father that has to give you to the Son. It is the Son that has to allow you to get to the Father. See, they work together. They're in total agreement. They don't fight against each other. Jesus always honored the Father. Even when he, even when he gave uh, the, com the commandment of baptism, glory to God, to the disciples, he honored the Father. He said, go, baptize it not only in my name, but in the name of the Father and in the name of the Holy Ghost. He said, I authorize you. Jesus told the disciples, he said, I'm authorizing you to baptize in the Father's name, my name, and the Holy Ghost's name. And so when the disciples went and baptized, they baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Because they baptized by the authority of. Somebody said, well, they said in the name of Jesus. That simply means by the authority of. Jesus Christ told us, to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost by the authority of. So we're baptizing by the authority of. If they said that from their mouth in the name of Jesus, it simply meant by the authority of. It was Jesus Christ who authorized us and told us to do it in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus always talked about the Father, always recognized the Father. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He didn't just tell you to go and baptize them to baptize in his name. He said in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Somebody said that's the name of Jesus. No, that's a lie. That's not the name of Jesus. Jesus' name is not the Father and the Holy Ghost. Jesus' name, Jesus is the Son and his name is Jesus. All right? The Son's name is Jesus. The Son's name is not the Father or the Holy Ghost. The Father's name is not Jesus. The Holy Ghost's name is not Jesus. It is the Son's name who is Jesus. She shall bring forth a son, and I shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go ye to my brethren, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and unto my God, and your God, and to my God and your God. So Jesus recognized that there is a God other than him. There is God other than him. All right? He recognized that there is God other than him, that he's not the only God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God the Father God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. So when Jesus say, your God and my God, we must see that as the person of God, the Father. All right? We must see my God and your God as the person of God the Father. See, that's where the persons come in, as the person of God the Father. Not that Jesus is a God, and that God the Father is a God, and that the Holy Spirit is a God. No, no three gods, one God. But don't forget the three persons that make up the one God. See? So when he said, my God and your God, see? He's talking about the person of God, Jehovah God. All right? God the Father. But he is the second person of God. God the Son. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right. Now let's take our Bibles and let's go to uh, St. John chapter 10. St. John chapter 10. Glory be to God. Let's stay in the same book and go to the 10th chapter. St. John chapter 10. <clears throat> All right. And let's begin at verse 28. St. John chapter 10, verse 28. 
All right, this is what it says. It says, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. All right, verse 29. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. All right? I'm sorry, verse 29. That was verse 28. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. That's verse 29. That's right. Verse 30. I and my Father are one. Now, we talked about this on last night. Let's go back to verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. We told you that Jesus Christ has a hand, and not only does he have one hand, he has two hands. Now, I know, I know, and you, you probably know that I know that hand represents authority, or hands also represent authority. Hands represents authority, or hand represents authority. So Jesus is saying that I have the authority to hold you in my hand and to keep you in my hand. But I also wanted to uh, use that for a double point or a double lesson, all right, to show you that on the other hand, God the Father has hands. He has body parts, all right, that cause him to be made up as a spirit person. God the Father is a spirit person. Glory be to God, hallelujah. He is a spirit person. And just because you are a spirit person, or just because you are a spirit, doesn't mean that you're not a person. God the Father is a spirit being. He is a spirit person. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And that does not mean that he doesn't have a body or body parts. And so I wanted to use that to convey to you that he does have a body. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So he said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So Jesus Christ has the authority, the authority to have a hold the sheep in his hands. And so thus God the Father, he has the authority to hold the sheep in his hands. So nobody needs to come trying to make a point, trying to say, well, uh, that simply meant that he has the sheep in his authority. Yes, it means that he has the sheep in his authority. Both, both of them, the both of them have the sheep in their authority, and the both of them also have hands. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So I want to convey to you a, compo a compound lesson. My father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Now the very fact the very fact that Jesus said, my father which gave them me is greater than all suggests that there are ranks in the Godhead. All right? There are ranks and roles in the Godhead. God the Father plays his role in the Godhead. Jesus Christ the Son plays his role in the Godhead. And the Holy Spirit plays his role in the Godhead. The Bible teaches us and tells us that. We don't just make this up. This is Bible. You have to know Bible in order to know this. And the problem is anybody that's not teaching you what the Bible is teaching concerning the Godhead does not know the Bible and they are teaching you false doctrine. That's why they are coming up with Jesus Christ as being the only entity in the Godhead and in heaven. All right? And that's why they are saying, that's, that's the reason why they can't understand uh, and, and don't recognize the three persons in the Godhead. Glory be to God. That's why their theology isn't fitting in the Bible. Hallelujah. 
Now, so he says, um, he says, my father is greater than I. My father is greater than all. Jesus said that my father is greater than all. So all, how much is all? All is all. All is everything. All is all. So if my father is greater than all, then that means that my father is greater than me. I'm Jesus and my father is greater than me. But if I am the only one in the Godhead and the only one in heaven, I would have to be the greatest. I would have to be the greatest of all. But Jesus is not telling you that he's the greatest of all. He said that my father is greater than all. He said, my father is greater than all. He didn't give you permission to teach and preach and say that he's greater than all. He said that his father is greater than all. So if you're teaching anything contrary to what he's saying or what he said, you are teaching false doctrine and you are teaching a lie. So for Geno Genesis to say that, the, that there is no uh, greater or lesser in the Godhead, he's a lie. In terms of position, it is. The father is greater than the son in position. Geno Genesis is greater than his boys in position. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He's not the father. He's not greater than his boys. I'm sorry. He's not. His boys are not greater than him. He's greater than his boys. He's the father. So Jesus recognized that he is not greater than his father. Now, Jesus says he's greater than the father. How is he greater than the father? Let's look at let's let's look at St. John chapter 14, verse 16. St. John chapter 14, verse 16, and find out how Jesus, how, how is the father greater than Jesus? St. John chapter 14, verse 16. All right, this is what it says. It says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. So the very fact that Jesus had to pray to the Father in order to give them another comforter, suggests that the Father is greater than the Son. Jesus had to recognize headship. He had to recognize the Father and pray to the Father. See, Jesus always recognized the Father. He always recognized his head. He had to pray to the Father for the comforter, to give them another comforter. And notice, Jesus said he's going to give them another comforter. So if he gave them another comforter, then the Holy Ghost cannot be, I mean, then Jesus Christ cannot be the Holy Ghost. We got these apostolics, people like Tommy Ingram and Geno Genesis teaching and preaching that the Holy Ghost is Jesus. The Holy Ghost is not Jesus. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost is his own person. Jesus said, I will pray and the Father will send you another comforter, which means he's not the Holy Ghost. He didn't say, I will pray and the Father will send me back again. He said, the Holy Ghost, the Father will send, send you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. So if the, if the Father is going to send another comforter, then Jesus Christ cannot be that comforter. Glory be to God. Jesus Christ is his own person and the comforter is his own person. Glory to God. All right, my brothers, sisters, and friends, we're going to have to stop right there and we're going to come back. We'll see you on the next video. God bless. Bye-bye.